people i have a daunting task in front of me which is present a simple looking but rather incredibly complex pedal to you after having only worked with it for about maybe an hour or two because uh i got it rather late before the release date which is now and um i have a gig and stuff so it needed to be done right now but I'm going to say I am very confident that I'm good enough at this stuff to understand what it does. When you get it, take your time. They did a mind-blowingly amazing 28-page manual that literally looks ridiculously good. Look at this. With really cool cool illustrations a little bit hard to read because it's like the comic-y idea you know with a font but still uh this this will definitely help you and i know in this video at the end we want to talk about expression we talk about it we don't even go into it that's just gonna this this is gonna be way long anyway so what are we looking at we're looking at the zombie zombie Double Z's and double E's. Zombie E E E E. When I heard the sounds that this beast can create, I know what it's doing. I studied sound design. I know what an LFO does. I know what a filter does. I know what a tremolo does. I get it. It wasn't mind blowing to me what it does. What was mind blowing to me was how good it does it. And also, that it's doing it with three knobs. I mean, now that I look at the pedal, it literally could have had five knobs and that might have made it better. Because five knobs would have meant not really sharing actually six knobs. They're Beatronics people, there's a lot of space on the pedal. Why give it secondary functionality on the Parasite and B knob? Now I'm getting mad. If you have space, there's space right there and space right there for more knobs. Okay, fine. That seems weird. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Back to the pedal. It's an octave, low, low octave, sub octave synth thing. Monophonic. It can do tremolo. It can do filtering. The filtering can be controlled with an LFO. It can be controlled with 
kind of a sample and hold random thing, but it's apparently not sample and hold. But sounds like a random kind of step filter. Let's call it step filter in different steps, which you can define. And it can also do ramping of filter and volume. Relatively simple so far. You can say whether the sub octave or that synthy lower octave or your original signal is affected by the filter. You're looking at the thing and you're trying to find out how is this all done? If you've looked at the slideshow in the beginning of the, prod the product shots, this is a relief, as we say in, in German. It's a relief. This is a thick piece of metal completely engraved tactile feel. Look at this. And the amazing amount of detail, I mean, right there, right there, I see my fingernail, right? Th this little bit right there reads 9 volt DC. Uh, I don't even know how they do that. This is a freaking ridiculous work of art. It is is that hand painted? Can't be. Where are they getting this done? Is this machine painted? How is this getting done? Who makes this? It's utterly ridiculous how all the user interface wordage is on this thing. I'm sorry, I'm my mind blown. Wow. Not necessary, but wow, Beatronics. So, uh, where were we? Okay. The lower octave they call parasite. The guitar signal they call B. That's only making it more complicated, but okay. Okay. So that's your volume for the parasite. That's your volume for the B. Your guitar signal, the B, can also be dry or be a little bit distorted, more distorted, and it's kind of fuzzy distortion, but that's fine. And then you also actually have uh, two more uh, levels of distortion by holding in bypass. Bypass is always giving you secondary functionality, which luckily they're not really hiding. They're actually riding on the thing right there. So you can see what the secondary functionality is right there. It's a little bit small, but there is a hint of what the knobs do. Up here, you switch between ramp, LFO and mod, or when this is an off position, look, there's another switch right here, which is the filter, whether that's on the octave, or the honey, which apparently is the normal guitar signal. It's not, it's the bee and the honey and the parasite and octave. They're, they're using different terminology here and that's highly confusing. Okay, so you turn that off and then you're in volume mode where you can either affect the parasite, the bee, or do a cross tremolo where it's actually going between the two. Clear so far? No? Okay. Ramp is kind of cool because you hold this thing in and it ramps up at a determined speed. It also ramps down at a determined speed. Let me show you. Ramp up, let go, see how it now ramps down slowly. So you can determine how long it takes to go up and how long it takes to go down again. What if you want to go down and up? You double click this, wait, uh, and now it goes down, wait, it goes down and up again at those speeds and down and then up again and then down and then up again. You get it. You can also tap speeds if you're in LFO mode. You can tap that. And this will turn into subdivisions when you hold in the secondary, blah, blah, blah. It's extremely complicated with only really three switches and three knobs. But it's worth spending the time learning it because let's go into sounds. We're going to start super simple. Okay, very, very simple. We're going dry, we're going filter off, and we're gonna turn that shit down. Okay, 
That means we're in LFO mode. Now we're in cross mode. But if there's nothing to cross to, if there's no octave, this is what happens. What you have to know is, even if I turn this down, it does change the guitar signal. But it changes your guitar signal so much later on anyway, who cares if your guitar comes out a little bit different? Well, I don't. Gonna dial in the, let's call it depth or wingspan, but depth in this case. Kind of sine wavy, the more depth I dial in, the more square it gets. That subdivisions. Did you see I was holding in bypass? It's only subdivisions when I'm holding in bypass. It's a secondary function. It also has five presets, by the way, here we're going to get into that. So let's just assume that's a nice tremolo, right? Well, actually it is. So there we go. Now I'll dial this back. I'm going to get this down. Now we're dialing in the octave, which is again monophonic. The higher you play, the better it tracks. And there's no way to actually play anything other than single notes. So th the same thing applies. It also affects the lower octave. But we're in cross mode or cross tremolo mode, which means if I now dial in the clean guitar signal, it will go back and forth between the two. I, I did mention that there's a distortion fuzz happening, right? So let's get this down. Let's get this down and only play with that. So I'm kind of on the second level already. If I wanted to be on the first level, hold down the alternate, which is bypass, and switch it to that first setting. Now it's a little bit less. And then number three, like this. And number four is without alternate. Thank you. 
and they were smart enough to actually allow you to turn this around. What do I mean by this? Well, if you're tapping the tempo, the instrument signal is going to be on the downbeats. Well, what if you wanted that reversed? You can actually flip that around by holding the bypass and switching to that X up in the top left. And that way it would actually reverse that. The same thing goes for, uh, what else? Uh, the LFO and modulation. If you wanted rhythmically to reset the down of the wave to something else, you can on all the modes, which is kind of cool. Now, I love this. I think this is absolutely fucking incredible. It's just such a shame that it's only monophonic. I want this for chords. God damn it. And it kind of works. I mean, it's tracking like the lowest note, may maybe. And with the distortion in there, it it, it works okay-ish. Okay. Now, if you wanted to manually dial in the speed, hold down the alternate. And this is actually now your rate. Again, I don't quite understand why there aren't just like two more knobs on there. It's only a three freaking knob pedal. It's big enough. Why aren't there two knobs here? I understand that Beatronics pedals are simple, but I mean, the Swarm has five or six knobs. So why in the world, now that I'm thinking about it, while I'm making the video, I'm thinking, why did they not why do alternate functions if you could have just freaking given it two more knobs? There's space on the... I don't understand. But okay, that's what we have to deal with. Okay, this was the cross tremolo mode, which is one of many. It's ridiculous. Gonna go to par, which now will ramp the parasite. <laughs> You can fade it in. How long do you fade it in? Well, hold this in. Further to the right is longer. Fade in and fade out. Okay. Maybe you don't want it quite so loud. Just get it down. But what if you wanted it to be just immediately there? Well, you can do that. Immediately gone and immediately there, technically. Now I'll turn it off. Obviously, uh, it helps a lot when it's on the floor, so you can just do that with your finger, uh, with your finger, with your foot. So, um, 
Just make the ramps longer again. Up and down. And by double clicking this, while there is a ramp mode going on, I just flip the ramps. Now it's up. You get the idea. If you go over here, it's doing the same thing, but now it's ramping the guitar, the clean, dry signal. You get the idea. And of course, flip that around again. Okay, so in amplitude mode, you can cross the amplitudes, like the streams, Ghostbusters, all that, or get the parasite up as a ramp, or the B up as a ramp, or down and up, or immediate, okay? Or you can ramp it up and it's immediately gone by doing this. So. Don't really see too much use for that, but once we get into filtering, it gets really interesting. So that's what we're going to do now by actually getting that down. We're going to filter mode for the octave so we can actually hear it better. Oh, forgot something. I'm sorry. Uh, the big knob in the middle, when you're in that amplitude mode will actually uh, be tone control for the octave. messed up. Okay, you get the idea. Tone control. We're going octave. Take the B down. Now we're only hearing ram. We're only hearing the parasite. Not too much of it because we filter. What filter? It's a low. Can even low pass. So what happens now is by hitting the bypass, I set the upper range of the RAM and without hitting anything, I set the lower range of the RAM. So lower range all the way down, hold it in, get it up, upper range. It really doesn't like their pickup. So let's get that ramp down immediate. 
Oh, nope. Even longer. So maybe not an immediate cut off, but let's make the ramp down a little bit, a little bit longer. Let's make it sweep up more. So hold it in and set the upper range. This actually isn't all that complicated if you just, again, an hour maybe. Now, I'm doing this so that I know where I am, but as soon as I do the ramp, it's going back. Get the idea? Now let's get the thing where I don't start all the way at the bottom. And a little bit faster. See where it's going? Wow, wow. Completely tunable in its range and it, in its up and down speed without having a pedal, which of course you can do and you can even define on your expression pedal the upper and lower range, just like we did here. Uh, I'm not gonna show you that because this video is long enough. What the fuck? Watch other people do that. And uh, Beatronics will, of course, actually have videos on their channel explaining all this stuff. So just letting you know you can do it with an expression pedal. I'm literally too lazy to do that. Cool. Well, let's change that ramp. It's pretty annoying with that synthy sound, huh? So why don't we do, go do this? Now, the parasite is not affected at all. So let's get the parasite down. Ramp down and it immediately jumps back to, um, well, you know what I'm trying to say, to all the way up. But of course, longer if you wanted that. And again, I can set that lower. So you can already see, you can completely control the ramp up or down and the speeds for wah sounds or of course for massive filter sweeps. So let's do that by cranking this wah thing or this, this thing here. We're gonna go reverse ramp, make it go down long and come back up, that's okay. So we're gonna set 
the range. So if you wanted massive filter sweeps, yes, you can do it. Just have to control the up and down. Know if you're going up or down by double tapping here and uh, set the upper range and the lower range, which of course, maybe now was a little bit drastic. Okay, I might've overdone it there. Um, so. So upper range maybe. More here. And what just happened? That's a problem with the double function. It now registered the this knob is supposed to be here. But I let go, I, I, I did this. Probably let go and move this a little bit and bam. It's not, I, having double functions is not ideal because you end up not having the values that you really want and accidentally resetting the other dimension, if you know what I mean. So now if I wanted to, I can dial in the parasite. Which is not affected by the filter. You can't actually filter both. I don't see a way to do this. It's either the honey or the octave, meaning either the B or the parasite, which means either your actual guitar or the synthy octave. <laughs> Sounds like when the B comes in now, the parasite is actually pushed down a bit. It's taking over in internally or something. It's like it, it, that, that synth doesn't stay as strong as I think it should be. Maybe we'll do this. Okay, that's what ramp does. Ramps the filter, up or down, left and right, and all that. We're, all, we're almost ready, almost there. Only two more modes. LFO mode, pretty simple. Now there's actually a center frequency and depth. Center frequency defined by wingspan and depth by hold this in and set depth. Again, secondary function. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Let's do this with our clean signal here. You can tap this. Less depth. But what happened? I changed the depth, but I also changed my center frequency. Did you hear it? Because now it's doing this center frequency. That's not what I wanted. I wanted this. Guys, dual functions aren't perfect. So speed, you can of course tap, one, two, three, four, 
and change the subdivisions right here. Let's do more depth. You can also change the speed with this rate knob. Of course, the distortion is always more fun. Now I'm mixing the parasite. Flip it around. Now, the parasite's being filled. stuff on there which today we've got the boss re202 on <laughs>
reality is some some really cool shit that again you have to work with it you have to play it you have to find its its strong points with your playing and probably create parts for it not play stuff you've always played okay do not do enter sandman so that's the lfo get it can lfo one thing or the other moving on now we got mad which i'm going to call a sample and hold filter they're calling it 65,000 so and so many different patterns don't know if that's actually what's happening sounds to me like sample and hold how many steps you can actually define here so I turn the depth down so you don't really have any filtering. problems problems is metal quotes uh, is for me to play in time with it i have to hear the filtering for a drummer to play in time with it fucking forget it in a studio situation without midi clock that's a typical problem as always there's no midi clock there is tap input analog tap you can do that control voltage uh, you could somehow have midi clock to cv to tap possible but you would probably have to tap it you can't tap 100 percent precisely 120 beats per minute or whatever you would need for your sequence which means you're going to have to continuously tap while you're doing the song and for me to play in time with it i have to hear the steps which I was really concentrating. But the thing is, that means you're not on top of the drummer the, in a live situation. The drummer is on top of you. So I mean, the drummer is on top of the steps. Don't know if that realistically works. Okay, it's a nice idea. It's very musical. But to actually really use it, please show me that you can do that. <laughs> Change tempo here faster. Maybe it's just an inspiration machine. Maybe we're not even using that that filtery thing later on because it's actually probably not usable in a band context. But I've got. Maybe that pattern inspired me to do that. How do I go to another random pattern? I actually just did that. <coughs> Switch and switch back. Oh, my God. 
and also you can stop things. How does that work? Wait. Um. Yeah. Uh. So the LFO stops. Not here, wait, on LFO. Ah, uh, on LFO, when you double tap bypass, it stops the modulation. And uh, on mat, you do that by momentary hitting tab. Presets. If you want to save a preset, there are five, I think, that you can save. There's the live mode, which is what we're in right now. If you want to save a preset, hold both of them in uh, until, I don't know, something happens, and then switch to the preset that you want to save to, and uh, then hold both of them in again. That's it. So preset number one, let's see what it comes with. Everything you see on the knobs now, not relevant. <laughs> Number two. You can see how it's very important that your drummer would have to hear that. In what situation has your drummer ever listened to you? Or the drummer is on a click. That's fine. How is this going to sync to the drummer's click? That's my problem with something so fucking cool and so rhythmical. How is it going to work in an actual musical context? Or in a studio situation, which we're going to find out. Here's another one. Here's number four, apparently. As I said, there's an input on the side for control voltage, tap tempo input, external tap, and expression pedal. And the expression pedal can be heel and toe defined per preset. It can, it, depending on the mode, it does different things. This is way more than just your all the way down, all the way up expression. It can absolutely be tweaked to your needs, but it would 100% explode the length of this video, which is already ridiculous. I would say make the pedal big, but we could never really make it small. Um, hey, Leslie, make it small. Just to show the people that, you know, we have that capability. Make it big again. Thank you. Um, the zombie. 
it's it's very ridiculous. Now, how usable are these sounds in a musical context? Well, you have to have the right musical context. It's not going to be your always own pedal. It's not going to be your pedal for every situation. Um, I think you can get some killer rhythm sounds by just actually using the built-in drive. I mean, you probably have other drives for it. And we did see that the actual guitar sound gets altered a little bit. But you could totally do that in their nice rhythm sounds. I would... Uh, Philippe Pampuri ju just saw the little video I sent him of the intro slideshow. Thank you, Philippe. Um, it's the man behind the pedal. I'll, I'll get to you. He says that sounds and looks so dope. <laughs> he hasn't seen the rest of this video where I'm bitching about stuff. Like, wh Philippe, where are the fucking other knobs? Okay, we get to this. So I will attempt to go and actually use this in a fully musical context. I'm going to take a campaign like Clockwork song, strip all the tracks from it, and replace everything with a zombie. Hopefully in a fully usable and musical manner. I will attempt to show you, don't know if I can succeed, that you can be really creative and create some really, really kick-ass sounds in actual music. I mean, this isn't your gent pedal, okay? But you can totally do some really cool shit with this. I love pedals like this when I have a band in the studio for that ear candy background track, for that, uh, you will see. The video is gonna be long. It'll be the whole session of me writing all the guitar parts and you're invited to watch it coming here up on the channel in the next couple of weeks. Um, so let's get to how unique is it? I don't think it's reinventing the wheel. The cross tremolo is cool and that's new. Tremolo is not new. An octave isn't new. A filter most certainly isn't new. Uh, ramping it with a um, momentary switch, that's kind of cool. Not, I don't know if that's new, but cool. Ramping it up and down with uh, different up and down speeds, I like it, very controllable. I wish Octave and Honey or Parasite and B, both sides, I wish there was a mode where I can send both of them through the filter. Because either or isn't always hitting it, but it's pretty damn cool that you have these options. Uh, the sample and holdy mat step sequencer thing is absolutely awesome. Totally cool. LFO mode is great. And as, again, if you want those synthy kind of ramps, you can absolutely uh, make a preset with exactly the speed that you need for your song and have that intro where you just hit that chord and it just goes and then you turn the pedal off and bam, there you go. Okay, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. You can do solos with a wah, where you just go wah, 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 you know, with that knob. Um, again, a shitty ton of stuff. Now, how well we never tried that? Ramp, honey, parasite down, dry. Let's see if I can do this. Upper range, lower range. Relatively fast. I want it to be wise. See, I mean, I kind of know what I'm doing. I see what it's doing. When the pedal is not on, oh, that's cool. It just, I didn't know that. Oops. Uh. I mean, there is a jump in tone and a click. I hear the click in the pedal, there's a relay. But if I have drive from something else here. I 
I don't know. I think it probably should be on all the time. <laughs> I don't think that momentary works well because it's kicking that other pedal when it comes on. See, it's not doing a wah, but if it's on. So I just used a different drive in a wah that. Okay, it works. Does it work as well as a wah? You have to tweak it. Build quality, ridiculous. Idea, ridiculous. Great. Uh, th that that relief on top. You're gonna you're gonna study that for an hour. It's it's so lovingly done. The words, the wingspan, the the bee, the parasite. It's all crazy. It's crazy beatronic shit. And the thing is. It sounds like Beatronics from beginning to fucking end. I'm not the biggest fan of hold down this thing for dual functions. Other companies have a little button, like the Eventide pedals, all have a little button that lights red, and I see very clearly that I'm on the second level. The problem is with this holding it in, what are you letting go first? This or, or down here? Because if I let go of this, a millisecond before I let go of this, then right now I've just changed my second parameter. And realistically, when you're on your knees in the practice room, on your pedal board, you can't be so fucking precise to always do this right. And then you've just, you know, if I want to set my, my range for uh, the ramp parameter, I'm setting my upper range, I push it down, upper range, okay. I let go, now lower range. You have to be very step by step. If there was a button, like on the Eventide pedals, push it, it lights up, you know very clearly you're on the second layer, you do your second layer, you push it again, and then you also don't have to do the, the stretch. For me, that would be a better way to do it. Uh, Source Audio has a switch. Some other people have an actual switch. Okay, a, a little LED, pushable LED that lights up. Maybe even one of these or something like this, you know. Push it, set it up, push it, set it up to the first level. But realistically, I don't see a point on this. It has three knobs. There's more than enough space for another three knobs. Maybe make them smaller. But what in the world is possessing you, Felipe, to not put three little fucking knobs here, okay? And make it super easy for me to adjust this. This is a six knob pedal that you made a three knob pedal with an alternate function. Y you still need the alternate function because these do alternate things, okay? I get it. But for the main operation of the pedal, it would be a lot easier if you just gave me three other knobs. It, there's no reason in the world why they wouldn't be there. Other than you, you're trying to make it look like a simple pedal, which it isn't. I think the timer in the video down there is telling you that it isn't a simple pedal. There's a lot you can do. So why are you giving me such an simple interface that's too complicated. Chase Bliss is doing that sometimes with dip switches, where when you turn the dip switches, the knobs do something else. Who in the world wants to go on the pedal board, do dip switches, now the knobs do this, now the dip switches back, now the knobs do this. Again, they hold on to their normal pedal size with six knobs and switches, but you know what? Some of those pedals might actually need 12 knobs. This needs six. It has three. That's my one gripe that operating it with the dual function press down is not ideal. Once you tame it, there's a lot of cool sounds. If you're looking for something similar, there's of course the Disorder that I just reviewed from um, Dreadbox, which is an up and down filter that reacts to your guitar with an envelope. It's a different idea. Here it's very, very tunable with the ramp 
so you can absolutely set the times. An envelope is reacting to your guitar playing, so it is different. Of course, this also has tremolo and LFO and sample and hold, so it's a lot more than the Dreadbox Disorder. But if you're looking for a filter pedal, that might be another one to compare. Maybe get both because they do different things. Um, that That's it from here. Sorry if, if I couldn't answer any more of your questions about this. I tried. I really tried. It's a 28 freaking page, very, very beautifully done manual from probably the craziest pedal people in the pedal world out there. And that's uh, said with all the love I have to give for Philippe and his team. Crazy freaking B people. I wasn't at NAMM and they weren't at NAMM, but had they been at NAMM, that was the one thing that I really would have missed, meeting those crazy B people again. <laughs> So thanks for commissioning this video, Felipe and Mario from Face. Thank you, guys. Um, hope this told you something. I'll put links below to the freaking zombie. And uh, look out for my video where I actually write a song with it or arrange a song with it. Let's. I, I pick a song where this will fit and write all the guitar parts with the one pedal. See you there. Animals at the end. Time flying by Thoughts are trapped inside a black hole No sleep tonight Rest till everything is sat in stone So I won't stop trying Till the sun goes up But my mind won't stop I won't back down Until I've reached the top Till the sun goes out